Hi, so the purpose of this recording is to answer a question posted by Orb. So I need a QPath and I'm having trouble with splitting my image into small constituent images. In this example, I would like to analyze the four slices separately, although they all have to be scanned together on a single slide. I can, of course, classify them as separate objects using the pixel classifier slash direct holder, but I was wondering if there is an easier way to do this like exists for the TMA. Thanks in advance. Um, Yes and no. You can separate an image. Let's take a simu one tiff as our example image, such that each tissue section is a separate image. Now, I will show how to do this, but I'll also explain why this is pointless after the fact. <laughs> so, QPath fundamentally is never meant for image uh, manipulation. Once your images are loaded in, that's that. You can generate as many pixel classifiers as you want, object classifiers, cell detection, and you can even modify those annotations in something like Java Topology Suite. But to try and separate a large image into multiple smaller images, that can't be done easily uh, or, yeah, in QPath. Now, what I've done in the past with images like these, if they were scanned with an Aperio scanner and they're in .svs format, is you can use something like image scope. Now with image scope, there's this little, um, well, it's grayed out, but it's called the extract region tool. You can basically draw, drag and drop a square around a tissue section and export that as a separate SVS file. Or if you want an non proprietary format, you have it be a JPEG, since I believe both SVS and JPEG use the uh, JPEG 2000 compressions. But since image scope is going to be out of the scope <laughs> of this uh, video, well, take a look at what can be done in QPath and limitations of this. So one thing we can do is we can take advantage of the create training images tool, which can basically turn an annotated area into a separate sparse image. Now, let's um, well, let's use this tool. Uh, give it a annotation like region, so you can see auto sort of selected, and we'll just draw around tissue section. I'll hit Control F just to you know save this annotation in case it already it hasn't already been, and then we can go and. Uh, create a training image. So if we select our class region and click OK, you can see that it's now somewhat separated as a separate image. So disadvantages. Um, it can only really separate out a square image. So the annotation I drew, well, it basically took the bounding box of that annotation. Unfortunately, you can see that there is still a little bit of tissue present here. Um, you can do this process one at a time and, and, you know, because if you have multiple region annotations on a single image and you try and create a training image, well, I'll actually show you what happens. Um, so let's create a couple of other uh, region annotations. Like this and the... Uh, so now... Uh, and before I forget, let's just turn on the uh, input display. If we go analyze uh, training images, create training image, it'll stitch these three images side by side. You can get away with this by repeating this process over and over, having one annotation class at, the t at a time, or ensuring you only have one separate annotation per class, deleting the uh, previous class each run. But again, what's What's the point of this? I mean, uh, with, without any context, I would like to analyze these four slices separately. There's no reason for you having to really separate these into four separate images. So I'll show you an example of um, how you can identify what annotation each analysis came from. So this is a quick kind of pass uh, or a quick demonstration. Uh, I'm just going to clear out some of these other images. Clear up the works. So, 
What kind of analysis could be done? Well, potentially a percent positive scoring. So let's try and simulate what that would look like. Um, I'm going to use a relatively low pixel size just because I want this to be quick. Um, so ignore the actual quality of the segmentation. And we'll run thresholding on nucleus, ESN, optical density. You just, uh, yeah, okay. And run. So we'll process all annotations. Again, ignore the, qual the poor quality of the segmentation. This is simply just to demonstrate the capacity of what can be done with a sort of multi-tissue analysis. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at some of these uh, cells. Let's go to the annotation tab. You can see its parent is region. Well, one way you can differentiate these uh, multiple regions on a tissue section is you can call them, you know, um, tissue one, tissue two, tissue three. You can create multiple um, different classes and assign a sort of classification to this uh, tissue section. As a result, all child cells, I guess you could say, <laughs> will inherit uh, that property. So let's go ahead and do this. Uh, you know, we'll create a new class, we'll call it. Uh, Tissue one, get a new class called tissue two, get a final class called tissue three. So I believe if we set the class, it should update all child objects accordingly. Updated. So now the parent went from being region to tissue one. Um, that yeah, and we can do it for tissue two, tissue three. So now, if we say export an annotation level measurement, um, I just like CSV better, and we'll call it measurements of CSV. Better. Uh, I forgot to save this project. Measurement, comma, annotate, export. Let's uh, take a look at located directory project. Just, you can see right off the bat, you have, can have whatever kind of analysis you need, and you can identify which of the multiple tissue sections on your slide came from, tissue one, two, three. In this case, one of the output measurements was percent positive scoring for our ESN marker, but more likely in your situation, you might want to be scoring using DAB, or um, I think you briefly mentioned the use of a uh, pixel classifier. So using the measure attribute of a pixel classifier, you can measure the relative prevalence of certain classes in a predefined annotation. Now, I showed here an annotation level export, but you could just as easily do a cell level export. Um, you know, why don't we try and do that right now? Um, cell level export, comma, call it, uh, Cell measurement. It won't take too long to export. Done. Now I'm going to open this next cell, which of course is not the ideal uh, platform for opening, you know, uh, large multi megabyte or even gigabyte files. But as you can see, um, Every single row corresponds to a single cell, and the parent tissue one, two, or three can be used as a categorical variable to identify in which of your multiple tissue section on a, on a slide did your cell come from. Um, now let's take one step back and say we had only one class. We called everything just tumor. Let everything be tumor. Save that. 
out. We're not going to measure, uh, we're going to export annotation level measurement. Else I forgot to hit full. For tumor cells inside of it should be called tumor. Yeah. We try the export. Uh, yes. For whatever reason, it's not showing. Oh, I guess it was deleted. Measurement, annotation, comma. Okay. So now, let's say all of your tissue sections were of the same class. How can you identify what it was if they're all called tumor? tumor? Well, one of the advantages of one of the many advantages of QBAT is that it exports um, by default centroid X and centroid Y, which is the position of the centroid of the bounding box, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, Pete or anyone else on the forums. But that is yet another way which you can identify um, what measurements relate to your, you know, three, four, or however many, four tissue sections you have. So, I hope this answers your question and why splitting tissue sections might not necessarily be a worthwhile use of your time. Um, but if for whatever reason you want to do it, I've provided methods of doing it both in QPath and in uh, image scope, but this is an SVS file. Um, and if you don't go around, uh, go about the method of splitting the tissue sections, well, there's another way of, you know, figuring out um, which results relate to which tissue section on a slide by using uh, the classes and classifying different annually drawn annotations. Um, yeah, so it's meant to be a quick video, uh, only 12 minutes long, not too bad. But yeah, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to let us know. Thanks.